with Al Jazeera. Straight to the U.S. President Joe Biden, who's speaking those in Nantucket, Massachusetts. And uh, so those who are now uh, wrapping Abigail in love and care and the supportive services she needs, she's been through a terrible trauma. You know, her mom was killed in front of her when her, when her kibbutz was uh, attacked by Hamas terrorists on October 7th. Abigail ran to her dad then who then was gunned down, gunned down as well, while using his body to shield little Abigail. She then ran to a neighbor for help, where they were all taken hostage. The, that entire house of neighbors were taken hostage by Hamas and held for 50 days. What she endured is unthinkable. Abigail was among 13 hostages released today from Gaza, under the brokered and sustained, though intensive, U.S. diplomacy. She's now safely in Israel, and we continue to press and expect for additional Americans will be released as well. And we will not stop working until every hostage is returned to their loved ones. As I said when I spoke about this deal on Friday, this has been the product of a lot of hard work and weeks of personal engagement for me and my team. We have been in close contact with the leaders of Qatar, Egypt, and Israel, speaking with each one of them repeatedly over the past few weeks to help secure this deal. We spoke again yesterday with the Emir of Qatar, uh, I owe special thanks to, in order to keep the hostage release on track and push for Abigail to be part of this release. And I'll be speaking again shortly with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. And we will continue to remain personally engaged, personally engaged to see that this deal is fully implemented and work to extend the deal as well. For weeks, I've been advocating to pause in the fighting for two purposes, to increase the assistance getting into the Gaza civilians who need help and to facilitate release of hostages. And we know that innocent children in Gaza are suffering greatly as well because this war that Hamas has unleashed is so — has such consequences. Thousands have been killed, and from the earliest days of this crisis, I've worked closely with President Sisi of Egypt, the Israeli government, King Abdullah of Jordan, and leaders throughout the region to expand the delivery of critical humanitarian assistance to help innocent Palestinians in need who are not part of Hamas. Under this deal, <coughs> fighting in Gaza has now been paused for three days. Over that time, 58 hostages have been released, including the Thai, a Filipino, and Russian nationals. Dozens of families have been reunited. And we worked urgently, urgently to take advantage of the pause to surge aid into Gaza. We've moved approximately 200 aid trucks into Gaza each day, loaded with food, water, medicine, fuel, and cooking gas. More is needed, but this deal is delivering life-saving results. Critically needed aid is going in, and hostages are coming out. And this deal is structured so that it can be extended to keep building on these results that's my goal. That's our goal, to keep this pause going beyond tomorrow so that we can continue to see more hostages come out and surge more humanitarian relief into, into those in, who in need in Gaza. We've seen this is the day-by-day -day approach, hour-by-hour -hour process. Nothing is guaranteed and nothing is being taken for granted. But the proof that this is working and worth pursuing further is in every smile and every grateful tear we see on the faces of those families who are finally getting back together again. And the proof is little Abigail. More than 20 other children, 18 years and younger, have been released. They've been released through this deal as well. They've endured a terrible ordeal. And they can now begin the long journey toward healing. And I'm going to continue working with the Emir of Qatar, President Sisi of Egypt, and Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel to do everything possible to see the hostages are freed, all the hostages. I'm grateful for the personal partnership as we pursue this deal from each of those men I just mentioned. And as we've worked together to see the see all this implemented and now to try to extend it further. I'll continue working with all our partners to take the hard but necessary steps to build an integrated and more prosperous and more peaceful future in the region, a two-state solution is the only way to guarantee the long-term security of both Israelis and Palestinian people, to make sure Israel and Palestinians alike live in equal measure of freedom and dignity. We will not give up on working toward that goal. So thank you very much. But thank God she's home.
little shy. I just can't imagine the enjoyment and the I, I just I wish I were there to hold her. Mr. President, do you have an update on the other Americans who are being held and any sense as to when they would be released? Uh, we are hopeful, but I don't have anything firmly to tell you at this moment. Sir, do you expect that if you are able to use this momentum to extend the pause, have you extracted any guarantees about proof of life for other hostages, or do you have an expectation of how much longer you could push this pause? Well, look, you know the deal calls for for every for every 10 hostages released to extend another day. So I'm hopeful this is not the end. It's going to continue. But we don't know. And uh, but I get a sense that um, all the players in the region, even the neighbors who aren't in, have been directly involved now, are looking for a way to end this so the hostages are all released and Hamas is is completely, uh, how can I say it, no longer in control of any portion of Gaza. And do they have control of all of the hostages, or are there still other militant groups that you have to deal with? We think there are probably other militant groups, but we're not certain. Mr. President, Mr. President, how is um, Abigail doing? What's her physical condition? Um, do you have well, any information? I, I haven't gotten that information. I just wanted to let you know immediately. They were going across. Uh, into Egypt, as you recall. That was the route. <clears throat> but an older, non-American, elderly, elderly woman is very sick and was in need of immediate medical help. So they arranged a cross directly into Israel to be able to take her to a hospital. All I know is that she has been held. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't seen a photograph. I've just been in communication with my team. But she is safely ensconced in Israel. But there's a lot more work to be done. How many days would you like to see the possible on I would like to see us move to a point where we were able to. Uh, well, let me put it this way. I'd like to see the pause go on as long as prisoners kept coming out. All right. Thank you all so very much. Thank I know you, you know we have to call you. I know you say, what's he calling me with only 10 minutes or so notice? <laughs> I said, that's a notice I get, because we didn't know, I didn't want to be having this press conference if they weren't physically, even when they were in the Red Cross ambulance, I didn't want to do it because they were not out. They were, they were still in Gaza. So uh, I don't thank you enough, but thanks for your patience. Well, and then I know it's... Uh, we're here anytime, <laughs> anytime. sir. <laughs> All right. Thank you know I thank Okay, happy holidays. Okay, you are watching Al Jazeera. That's the tail end of uh, an important press conference by the US President Joe Biden, who's been speaking uh, about the release of a US national, a four year old Abigail Eden, who has been released by Hamas from Gaza. She sadly lost both of her parents in the October 7th attack in southern Israel. He also acknowledged the, the suffering in Gaza and reiterated that he'd been speaking to all of the regional players, Qatar and Egypt, when it comes to hopes of a lasting ceasefire. He said, we need to take advantage of this pause to get aid in. We need to build on these results to keep it going beyond tomorrow. He said it was a day-by-day -day approach.